welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by Nate Weitzer. He's on the East Coast. And we're looking at play a props here in what could be the final game of this Eastern Conference playoffs in Indiana. Going to be looking at, uh, obviously, Celtics and Pacers here with these play a props. Also got best bets up in a separate episode from this game as well. And we're bringing you both each and every day now moving forward. So make sure to subscribe to that page and continue to follow along. Also want you to head to the lines.com and use that prop finder tool that we have up there under the NBA tab. Make sure you're getting the best odds and lines available to you from all of these books, giving us bets and play a props in the postseason. Nate, let's go ahead and get into your first play a prop here. Going to Nem, what are we calling this? Nem Sanity? That doesn't work for me, but what's what's the Nem Hard nickname right now? I think Nem Sanity was just referring to that one specific game okay. where he drops 30, uh, 32, I think, out of the Celtics. But yeah, I mean, we're we're not going to jump off this bandwagon. We're going to take him to get half that many and go over 15 and a half points. I mean, I, if you were asking me to take an alt and expect Nemhard to once again torch this team to the point he scores like 2025. I'm not really on it, but I mean, this has been about his floor uh, since he got hot. We talked about like 17 points per game since they lost. They were blown out in the garden game five and obviously no Halliburton. Now I, I, I mean, I think I'd be fine with this bet. If Halliburton was back, I might actually be better with it because, you know, take some attention yeah away from them yeah. hard. Like my one concern is that the Celtics are like, this is the guy we got to stop. And now you get like Derek white, Andrew holiday eyes on you at yeah. all times. And like, can you do it again? Young blood. Uh, but I, I mean, he's scored in a variety of ways. We talked about the D cell game. The D cell game is very strong for Andrew Nemhard. Like kids, th- this is, this is what kids are bringing to the table. Now, like you have, you have to be a very good, Euro step with the slowdown and then finishing off either leg. And he's been so good at that. He's shooting 63% on drives in these last five and averaged 15 drives per game so far in the series. Only Luka Doncic and Jalen Brown more in the, in the conference finals so far. So the usage is incredibly encouraging. And while like he might get more attention without Hallie, he also had the third most touches in a recent game without Halliburton, 99 touches, 52 in the front court. And it's a, a lot of time on the ball, but he's not like, you know, pounding it out like like a Brunson or Doncic or someone like about four seconds per touch. That that means he's in the flow of the offense. So he's not going to be asked to just like ISO Drew Holiday, get your shot. Like, no, like the Pacers are moving it around side to side. Nemhard is going to see a seam and he's going to get in there. And I just feel very confident about his ability to finish at, in these kind of different situations. And then once he gets that going, like he's been great from downtown. <laughs> he's now shooting 73% from downtown at home in these playoffs, I think, uh, at least in the first half. And then, and then it might slow down for him in the second half, but he's still like 60% or better. Like he, he, he's just been very good. Um, and yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to fade him after, after that type of performance. No. And like you said, like we are sitting here waiting on news about Halliburton. There's even the potential that drew holiday is either limited or doesn't play. So like you, we still, we're, we got to make some bets here. Uh, if we, if we're still interested in, in, in putting some, some, some wagers down, like we got to sort of see who, um, it, it can do their thing regardless of the the status of those two dudes. And I think Nemby at this number is still a good number with or without Halliburton to your point. Um, I'm still on, I'm, I'm my second first bet rather for, for player props here is, is Pascal under. And I, I think that falls under the category here. It's under 12 and a half rebounds and assists for him juiced a little bit down. So it's like minus minus one thirty uh, is the best number you're going to find there, but I'm still okay with that because I like, if you're looking at the averages of what he's, you know, doing in the playoffs, then like maybe you think that this is a little bit scary, but it's really just about the first four games of this playoffs. Like he went absolutely out of control, right? He was like dominating the Bucks in, in all areas of the game, including scoring. And then after like game three, it got taken down, but he was averaging 16 rebounds and assists in in that series. Since that time frame, he's gone under an 11 of 12 games at this 12 and a half number. He's gone 12 once, uh, but pretty comfortably under other, other than that. 9.8 rebounds and assists per game during these last 12 in the playoffs. Uh, that's with 11.8 rebound chances and 5.3 potential assists. So you do that math right there, and you're basically at like 16 and a half, seven, about 17 rebounds and assists in terms of potentials. So like you want him to get 13 on 17 potentials. It's a pretty high number there. Uh, and Al is basically the best rebounder at this point on the floor uh, for the starters. I mean, you can say Tatum's a better rebounder, but Tatum's on Miles Turner. Al's on um, Pascal. And even if Pascal is able to do his thing scoring against Al, 
Um, he has not been able to rebound against him and his rebound chances have remained low and his rebound chance percentage has remained low in this series. And it's in part because like Miles Turner ain't crashing those offensive boards when he's standing out in the three point line. And now there's, it gets Neesmith is your biggest opposition, but you've got a lot of like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown coming in for those boards without much uh, resistance on their part from like got from guys trying to get boards for the Pacers uh, because they're just bigger than everybody else on the floor besides Pascal and Miles Turner. Um, and Jason Tatum so much faster than Miles Turner when he's guarding him that he's gotten rebounds on the offensive and defensive side based on his quickness to the ball, not necessarily having to like actually box out Miles Turner. Right. So that leads me to go like, well, Pascal's in a bad spot here because he does use use his strength and some of his length because he has very long arms to get that but he's got a size disadvantage against Al Horford they're not putting the normal like you know uh, shorter faster guys on Pascal to make sure that they can stay in front of him they're just meeting him with the brute force of Al Horford whose quickness has dissipated over the years we'll say um, since he's been at the University of Florida obviously as he gets older and a little longer in the tooth and that's no shade to him because he's doing impressive as hell stuff right now for this team on both sides of the floor um, but I just I just don't like the the volume for for Pascal I'm, I'm he's gonna play minutes but especially if Halliburton's not in there you would think maybe he gets a few more dimes without Halliburton it's like not really uh, his numbers are actually exactly the same with and without Halliburton it's just that he's gonna be looked at to score a bit more and the usage will remain high uh, and if guys are missing shots he'll probably start forcing it but that's not gonna lead necessarily assists and rebounds uh and when he's going to the bucket like when he's driving he's rarely passing off of that uh less than like 20 percent of the time that he actually makes a pass off of his drives right now in the playoffs so it's he's got one prerogative it's score and it's not get rebounds and assists so i'm gonna go under 13 of those yeah and the celtics are usually not the, not a team to put two on the ball right they, 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 if, if siakam's hurting us like we're gonna switch that matchup or something but we're not gonna double him like we're not gonna overreact to like despite the fact that he's had great first halves in each of these games like they're just like all right well like jalen you got him now uh so I, I i do agree that the assists even though he got six last game they they're not extremely reliable here and i mean yeah what what is up with the boards I mean, both him and Miles Turner expected them to have to have some trouble boarding because of the reasons you outlined in the series. And they both just had an incredible spike game in game one because it was kind of this unexpectedly competitive and then the overtime game. And but since then, like the averages have gone down for both guys. And he he's like his best chance to get a to get a possession against Al Horford, apparently, is to like flop out of bounds. Like he's he got a couple foul calls on Horford because Horford is bodying him. And he's like, all right, next time you do that. Like I'm, I'm just gonna fall over because Horford has just, just so much stronger than him. Yeah. Um, if they're matched up on the board, so I am gonna take Al Horford here, and once again, not not fading somebody who had a fantastic game. But look, over two and a half threes open at plus one fifty, and to me, the I, when I saw that, I was like, are the books expecting Porzingis back? Maybe they were. But KP officially ruled out, and it's only plus one forty. So I mean, this is very much worth the price. If you think like, I mean, he could go way over this or he could go over, but um, I mean, it's definitely worth the price versus taking like any of his other overs, like 18 and a half points rebounds. Why? Like 70% of his field goal attempts are from three, 76% in this series have been from three. So like, just take the threes and, and get him that, that, that those nine points. Uh, that's what we're going for here. And the angle, I mean, I talked about the Celtics maybe being like, we got this in the bag, like whatever, we we can play one more game. I think that the old the elder statesman here can kind of taste the finish line, which is what we saw against the Cavs in game five, right? Just absolutely exploded. And we tried to fade him after like not doing much in that one, but then he has a monster game to end this. And he talked about how important it is to capitalize on those opportunities in the playoffs because for him, it would be great to get 10 days off uh, after winning this game. So I think... He will be locked in. He seems to clearly be out of his slump, uh, which, you know, he couldn't hit those open threes. And now he's just getting wide open threes because the Pacers do have to put two on the ball when Jason Tatum is killing him like that. And we saw Tatum just easily kick it over to Horford, who, you know, shot seven for 12 in that game, right, from deep. Seven of 10 were defined as wide open, six plus feet from a defender. So, I mean, even if you're slumping, like you're going to hit those. Those are practice threes. The Celtics as a, as a whole have generated 21 wide open threes per game in this series. And I mean, the only time he didn't get many shots going was was the, the game two blowout, right? Where he only played nine minutes in the second half, didn't even take a shot. Uh, and then Cornette got injured. So now, I mean, they're just a little thinner in terms of their options of who's going to roll off of Tatum. Sam Hauser can't hit anything right now. 
The bench has been terrible. Uh, Xavier Tillman and O'Shea Brissett are not giving you that kind of spacing. So I think Horford is good for 30 plus minutes here. And he's going to hope that it's the last time he has to play until next Thursday. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, the shots are just there. They want him to shoot. He's down to shoot. He's shooting a lot of them from the corner now, getting down there. Uh, and that's helping him a ton, making a lot of those. You made a couple from the from the wing and above the break. But yeah, there's this is a, a dude that there's just no point in taking anything for points rather than just the threes, like you said. Like, it's all coming from three anyway. So if, if he's going to take 12 of them, we should probably feel good about him making three of them consistently. That's not very high percentage. That's very low, actually. Um, so it should average out to getting him three to four, to be honest. Uh, and, and I agree with that uh, entirely for Al Horford. The days of fading him uh, without him being on, like, no rest. Are, are, are a little bit behind me, um, but we'll see. Moving forward in the next series, probably against the Mavs. But let's uh, close it out here with uh, t- talking about the under on Ben Shepard. And I'll just throw it out there. I'm going back to Miles Turner blocks, by the way, under 1.5. The number is the same. The juice is gone. I gave this out at minus 104 in the last game, but I'm going right back to it even at minus 145. I do not care. Um, the Boston Celtics do not get blocked. Al Horford doesn't go down low. Miles Turner is guarding him. End of end of discussion. Uh, I'm not even worried about the minus 145. Let me drink that juice and get uh, and get Miles Turner under two blocks for this bet. I'm taking Ben Shepard's just pure fear that is just emanating from him and is just oozing out of his pores. You can just see the fear coming out in a way that you're like, Ben, what happened, man? Like, I, honestly, what happened is, is like he's just like, please forget about me and just leave me in the corner. And I'll make a couple open threes. And even these ones were a little bit more contested. And that's going to happen when, you know, you, you're missing Halliburton and now all the defenders sort of shift. Right. And now you've got Drew Holiday on Nemhard, which should be a pretty big uh, mismatch on for, for Drew in, in terms of his favor. Although and we talked about Nemby coming forward, but everybody else too moved down the line. Now you've got other guys like if you've got Derek White on Ben Shepard, essentially you're like, well, that's not very good for Ben Shepard. Um, and so I, I think that's going to be the case here. I'm, I'm taking it all under 10 and a half PRA. The way that this bet gets just, you know, flummoxed is like he he hits his threes um and he was over four but those threes like a couple of them rattled in and out you might say there's some positive regression coming but our boy seems to have like lost some of the magic where like i mean even his rebounds and assists were like whoa where did that come from oh my god all of a sudden ben shepherd's on the screen did not forgot he was on the floor that's crazy it's just not the same way anymore where there's less dudes to worry about that are better than ben shepherd um because halliburton's not in there Interesting move to start him. He still only got about 25 minutes in this last game. Um, I mean, but it's still, I I wouldn't bank on that not being the case, by the way, just to reiterate for everybody what I said last game. TJ McConnell's value is based on the fact that he comes in for spurts. He still only played 28 and a half minutes for TJ. So you still need to to monitor TJ's minutes in a way that's like, it's not just him playing 36 and being the, the primary ball handler for the entire game. He needs that extra stamina to like go by guys that way, et cetera. So just keep that in mind. But as far as Ben goes, like, like, like I said, his shooting wasn't there. He was a minus eight in this game, which was second worst on the team behind Pascal. And Pascal's minus numbers were all in the second half. And obviously, they were leading in the first half, so it makes sense. But Pascal was on the floor for some bad minutes in that second half, and so was Ben Shepard as well. In fact, Ben Shepard was one of the few guys in the first half who had a negative plus minus. So keep that in mind as well, that he was not bringing much to the floor in that game. I wouldn't see his minutes much above 25. I mean, I think based on the fact that he's actually a rotation player, if this game does get out of hand and we get some garbage time, he's not going to be out there in the fourth quarter. It's going to be like Kendall Brown and and guys that you haven't really heard of um, that are going to be out there playing for the Pacers, not necessarily Ben Shepard. So, um, you know, keep keep all that in mind as well, that like he's sort of one of those weird in-betweeners, kind of like Peyton Pritchard, where you're like, "Ah, I'm kind of scared that Peyton Pritchard's not even going to get garbage time anymore, to be honest, because he's so such a part of the rotation. Um, And if Drew's limited, so same concept for for Shepard is like, he's one of those in-betweeners that I don't see getting more than 25 minutes, no matter what the shots uh, haven't been more than four in a game. And four was actually the, the, the high for him. He's, he's had five a couple times, but that was before this series. Um, and then everything else, like I said, like it's just really just looking like a dude doesn't really necessarily belong on the floor for certain parts of this series. And that's where I'm at with D white. So I'm taking uh, D white, sorry uh, for Ben Shepard. So I'm taking him under there uh, as, as the corner threes haven't been uh, falling. They haven't been really as available. And as far as the rebounds and assists, like, they're just the potential chances of all, of all both of those are combined at about six. So I don't, I don't feel good about him getting this in this series anymore. Yeah. He's your classic like placeholder starter, yeah. right? At this point, it's just like, we just don't want to start DJ McConnell. Right. So you're in there kid. And we know you, you're not ready for this. And clearly, yeah, like no matter what, what type of pep talk they give him about, like, you got to take those corner threes. You got to keep, you know, got to keep the defense honest. Like I, I don't see him stepping up and hitting a bunch like one or or two maybe uh but the 
the RA, yeah, has only really been there in game seven when the Pacers had that record setting performance at MSG. Like otherwise he's just, he's also not very involved as a playmaker. He's out there to, like, just, just be, be a body and be a pretty solid defender. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, clearly in, in there over his skis. Um, and I, yeah, again, Rick Carlisle, you're gonna, you're really gonna like pull the starters. Like TJ should be out there until like one thirty left in the fourth quarter, unless this is a 20 plus point game or something. Like you should not be waving the white flag, regardless of whether Ben Shepard is part of that white flag lineup. Uh, like, like you should. There ain't no game eight. There, there ain't no other. This, there, they can rest in the off season, Rick. Like, let him, let him give it a shot here. I hope he does, man. Otherwise, lock him up, honestly. But that is all the time that we have for you in this one. Continue to follow along and subscribe to that page. You can check out these player props and the uh, best bets that we have in a separate episode every day now, moving forward throughout the postseason. And until we see you next, happy betting. Stop.